All right, everybody, um, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I saw some familiar names on the registration, so welcome back to everyone who is here um, over the summer. Um, if you haven't been here before, welcome. Um, we'll run through the process uh, as far as we've gotten to date and uh, get everyone up to speed on what we've been doing since the summer. Um, but we're excited that you're here tonight. I think we'll have a few more people filtering in and that's fine, um, but we're glad that you're with us. So similar to what we've done previously, um, if you visit our website at columbusaquatics.org, we'll have the presentation posted there after the meeting. Uh, the meeting tonight is being recorded, so that video uh, will be available on the website as well. Um, and if you haven't already signed up to receive the emails, um, you're here, so that tells me that maybe you do get them. Um, otherwise, you can uh, click on the link that we'll put in the chat for you there, so you can sign up and receive the emails about the project and stay up to date. Um, some quick Zoom uh, etiquette protocols here. Um, you've all been muted as you joined. Um, everyone will have a chance to speak once we go into our breakout rooms a little later on. Uh, we won't have any poll questions tonight, but if you registered and signed up for a breakout room, um, you'll automatically be placed in there. If you would like to be in a different breakout room, you can go ahead and put that in the chat and we'll make sure you, make sure you get in that room. So tonight, like I said, we're going to go uh, through an update on the process. We're going to share with you some design concepts for each of the sites, and then we'll go into our breakout rooms, um, similar to what we've done previously in the breakout rooms. Um, we would like to um, find a reporter um, from the public that's in the room uh, to take notes and to share back with everyone after the, after the breakout room um, with the wider group about what we discussed so that we can um, have a little discussion with everybody. So uh, familiar faces here, if you were here over the summer, um, I'm Carly Sakella with Legged Architects, and I'm sort of um, leading the facilitation of the um, Aquatics Capital Improvement Plan. Um, there's some other staff with Legged Architects that's here tonight that'll be uh, filling in on the breakout rooms. And then we have um, a lot of staff from, from Columbus uh, Recreation and Parks that are with us as well. Um, you may ask, why are we doing this? Um, we understand and uh, Columbus Recreation Parks understands that the, the aquatic facilities do need some improvements uh, to better serve the residents. Um, and, uh, you know, we've gone through sort of this um, eight month process in determining um, what those improvements are, um, what new facilities are needed and um, how to develop really these long term strategies for the aquatics um, in the city of Columbus. Uh, part of that has come out of the 2014 uh, General Recreation and Parks Master Plan, which identified uh, several areas of focus for the city. Um, some of them do pertain to aquatics, such as upgrading and expanding those facilities. We know Columbus is growing, um, and we want to be sure that when we are upgrading and expanding these facilities, we're focusing on health and wellness and promoting, promoting diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, on top of that, we do want to make sure that we're doing these in a way that creates uh, sustainable operating funding for the city as well. Um, if you were here over the summer, um, you know that we were in the gather phase and this is a five step process. And so now here we are um, all the way in the last phase of the process, which is transform. And so um, part of this, uh, you know, the first phase of this was uh, the online survey that we created. Um, I, we had about 2,400 uh, members of the public take this survey. And we have some um, really great outcomes from that. Uh, so combining the online survey information with the information that we gathered in the first round of virtual public meetings um, really helped us set the tone for the improvements and the upgrades um, for the aquatic facilities in Columbus. Um, seeing the turnout in those virtual meetings, we thought that um, you know since it was summertime, maybe the best place to go to get more feedback uh, was to go to each of the sites uh, to visit and to gain feedback from the community and the uh, members of the public who actually are using those pools. And you can see there's some images uh, that we gathered, um, you know, over the summer when it was hot, not like today. Uh, from there, we kind of listed everything that we had heard from you um, through the survey, through the virtual engagement, through the on-site engagement. Um, and we categorized those, were they programming needs? Um, you know, do we need more lifeguards? Do we need uh, swim classes in the evening? 
Do we need to provide childcare? Um, you know, those all fell into this sort of programming needs bucket. Um, and a lot of what we were focusing on then was the facility needs bucket, which included things like uh, shaded structures, upgraded bathrooms, um, having, uh, you know, natural elements included in the pools, extra picnic areas, uh, more lap lanes. And so we uh, tried to hone in and focus really on those facility needs. And then moving into the next phase, um, we held some design charrettes with various members of the Recreation and Parks Department using that information uh, that we gathered from you. So taking those facility needs, uh, we cut out all of these great little pieces um, and we printed out the sites. And so then meeting with the Recreation and Parks staff who really know these sites, who know the ins and outs of these sites and these facilities, um, you know, understanding that the way they're used currently, uh, what works, what doesn't work, challenges with the site and, and things like that. Um, we were able to come up with some, some uh, interesting design concepts that, that use your feedback and their knowledge to really combine it and put it together. And so um, that's really what we wanna share with you tonight. So in this uh, last phase, which we call the transform phase, um, we're still at the front end of that. So tonight we're looking to evaluate the pros and cons of each of the concept options that we're providing. Um, and we wanna be sure that everyone has an opportunity to provide, to provide that input. And so when we go into the breakout rooms, uh, you know, we really wanna hear from you um, about what you think about them. And now keep in mind, um, you know, these concepts are coming from your input. They're coming from uh, recreation and parks knowledge. But these are still um, options. These are still ideas. Um, nothing that you're going to see here tonight is final. Uh, this is us putting, uh, you know, putting the start of a building together um, with all of this information. But we're still looking for more feedback. And so we're going to tweak it from here um, as we move into the next steps of sort of finalizing this capital improvement plan. So beginning with the spray park. Uh, for the concepts. Here you see Barnett, Blackburn, and Scioto Southland. The uh, spray parks themselves um, were to receive um, additional seating and more shade. And so what we've done here is try to strategically place either picnic shelters or shade structures uh, so as to provide shade not to the splash pads themselves, but uh, to the surrounding areas. So for the parents, for the caregivers, um, for people who are visiting that are maybe not using the spray park. Um, so they would have some shaded areas to sit. Um, next, looking at Dodge, Driving Park, Maryland and Lincoln Pool. Um, these are pools that have all been upgraded within the past, um, I think 10 years. Um, and so changes to these are fairly minimal. We know that generally they're meeting the needs um, of the community. And you can see here some extra shade, more lap lanes, uh, maybe some expanded zero depth entry areas, um, but really just kind of small interventions. Um, and you know, keep in mind that this capital improvement plan is not a two year or five year plan. This is a 10 or 20 year plan. And so uh, what you're seeing here is really our analyzing of demographics of the city, the growth of the city, where that growth is happening um, and then looking at, uh, you know, how to combine that with the feedback that we received and how to uh, prioritize sort of these capital improvements to the pools. Glenwood and Windsor pools are on a little bit of a separate track. Um, the design of these is already underway um, and I believe is actually wrapping up at this time. And so there have been separate meetings about uh, Glenwood and Windsor. So we're not going to really get into the design of those pools here tonight. But I wanted to include them because we are looking at the city as a whole. And so um, what you see here are the new uh, designs for Glenwood and Windsor. Glenwood on the left there and Windsor on the right. So for Tuttle Pool, um, you know, we're working with a tight site in that area. And so we looked at various ways that we could um, really enlarge the area of water at Tuttle. Um, to upgrade the bathhouse, to maybe move the parking to somewhere that's a little more accessible, um, and to really kind of put Tuttle on display. Um, you know, it's really nicely tucked away in the woods. Um, and so we just kind of looked at a couple of options um, for how we could rethink Tuttle. For Mary and Franklin, um, we have a much different site. It's very flat, very open. Um, 
plenty large for expansion. And so Marion Franklin being an original pool, um, we looked at a couple of different options here. We have the room for an Olympic size 50 meter pool. And so we wanted to see what that would look like on the site and provide that as an option. Um, you can see the diving wells, the water slides, um, zero depth entry. And in both options, we are maintaining the existing bathhouse. For the aquatic center, uh, we have three concepts. And so the, the concepts that we're gonna go through um, are looking at a combined Thompson uh, Community Center and Aquatic Center. Um, and so we're showing this here um, where Thompson currently sits uh, with the existing Aquatic Center then to become a parking structure. And so we looked at pulling the Aquatic Center um, up onto Fifth Avenue, put it on display, um, we looked at having 50 meter pools. We looked at having smaller pools, uh, diving, and then a separate leisure pool area as well. And so kind of wrapping these um, is community space. This would be a, a two-story building. Uh, we've included a walking track and the community space would have things like community rooms, uh, weight rooms, fitness areas, multi-purpose spaces. Um, and the competition pool would include a spectator area as well in the upper level. Uh, for the second concept at the aquatic center site, um, you know, we looked at kind of a more compact pool uh, that included a separate therapy pool. Um, and in this one, you can see the competition pool is still up front on Fifth Avenue. Uh, the leisure pool is tucked back um, around the other side of the building with support space separating the two. And here again, we have a two-story community space that includes similar features, um, walking track as well and then the spectator seating for the competition pool um, would also be on the second floor. The third concept for the aquatic center site, um, again, includes uh, the smaller pool, um, the two-story community space, and then this one has the leisure pool um, along Denison Avenue there as well. Um, and so, uh, all three of these options have similar leisure pool amenities, the water slide, a, a play structure, um, some splash pad areas. Um, and then, um, you know, the competition pool again has the second story um, spectator area as well. So all we've talked about so far has been um, the existing aquatic sites. And so we know that uh, kind of a major part of this capital improvements plan is to identify areas of the city that are lacking in aquatic facilities. And so you can see here those, those black boxes are areas that we've noted as areas of high density population, um, areas of town that are continuing to grow and expand, um, and also areas that, as you can see, have no aquatic facilities. Um, we've talked, um, I think, in every previous a virtual engagement meeting, it came up um, about a poss possible partnership with Columbus City Schools um, and, and how, can, how can these two entities really support each other. Um, and you know, these talks are ongoing. We haven't identified any sites or specific locations for these, but we want to um, get your feedback and share with you um, some thoughts that we're having on prototype, uh, prototype pools for outdoor and for indoor. So for the indoor facility, um, we have two uh, prototype concepts. And so um, concept one there on the left is a larger facility that would include um, more community space, uh, a larger leisure pool, a larger competition pool, um, spectator seating. This could really be um, you know, a destination facility. And concept two that we've been looking at um, is kind of a smaller facility. What if we have a smaller site? What if we have a tighter site? What if we have a partnership with somebody um, that wants to put one of these on their site? Um, and so we wanted to kind of do our due diligence in having um, two size pools um, that could be ready, uh, you know, if the site becomes available. Um, additionally, we have two prototype concepts for a potential future outdoor facility. Um, we're using a similar bathhouse design to what we've shown previously, 
um, or the existing bathhouses, I should say. Um, you know, both of these options here have separate diving wells. Both of these options have uh, splash pad features. Both of these options have play structure, zero depth entry, water slides, uh, 25 meter pools, basketball, but we're just looking at different options um, for how these sites could potentially lay out. So we're gonna go into our breakout rooms. Um, I know I kind of breezed through these concepts, but in each of the breakout rooms, whichever one you've selected, um, there'll be a little more deep dive into those concepts and a chance for everyone to have feedback on each concept. Um, remember, we're not, we're not really voting. We're not selecting which one um, is the best. We wanna hear the good and the bad. You know, it, the final outcome could be a combination of these. It could be something totally different. Um, but we want to get your feedback on what you've seen today. Um, so uh, you'll automatically be placed in the room um, from your registration. If you've asked in the chat to move to a different room, um, I'm hoping that Becky was able to, to move that. Um, so everyone should start getting a pop-up on their screen um, to send you to your breakout room. So um, you can go ahead and click on that. Um, please remember to select the reporter once you're in the room. Um, and then we'll have 30 minutes in our breakout room. Um, and when we come back, you can click uh, leave breakout room to come back to the general meeting. So I'll see everyone back here in about 30 minutes. Thanks. So let's talk a little more about the indoor uh, pool concepts. And if we get through them all, um, we can definitely hit some of the other prototypes. I do have those included in here as well but I wanna make sure we get through the indoor uh, pool concepts first. So um, a roundup of the input that we heard, um, and remember this is through survey, through virtual engagement and through on-site uh, engagement. So, um, you know, I think we had some conflicting ideas about replacing the facility or renovating the facility. Um, there were a lot of, uh, aquatic features that are kind of missing in the existing aquatic center, which is, um, a leisure pool area, including, you know, kids area, slides, zero depth entry, um, leisure lap lanes, um, I think were a, were a big deal too. Um, having a separate diving well was uh, something that came up quite often. Um, and you can see here just the general um, outcome of, of that community input. So for concept one, um, I am going to focus on the aquatic amenities. So we've been kind of purposely vague on the community space side, side of things. Um, I welcome your input on that, but this is really an aquatic plan. Um, and so I do wanna make sure that we focus on the aquatic amenities that are included here um, at this time. So the green there is the leisure pool area. And so there you can see, uh, we have four 25 meter leisure pool lap lanes. Um, and that is separate then from a larger leisure pool, which includes zero depth entry with a play structure. Um, it includes a basketball slash volleyball area. Um, and it also includes a, a current channel, which is similar to a lazy river, but just not as large. Um, and then on the competition pool side, you can see there we have 12 uh, 50 meter lanes. Uh, along with um, two diving boards in a combined diving well. Um, this building has separate entries. Um, we have one entry for sort of the community side of things. So this would be if you were using any of the community center amenities um, or the leisure pool area, but then we have a separate entry uh, for the competition pool. Um, so we're thinking uh, school buses, uh, families, they would drop off the teams there at that competition entry before parking. And then on the second floor um, of the pool area, the walking deck would kind of surround that leisure pool. And uh, the competition pool then has uh, a large spectator area on the second floor as well. So I welcome your feedback on the pros and the cons of this design. Oh, I forgot to ask for a reporter. Who would like to report back to the larger group? I'll go ahead and do that. Is that Jay? Yeah, it's Jay. Thank you. 
So would someone like to start with the with what they see as a, a pro or a con here? Yeah, I can jump in with that. This is Logan. Oh, um, thank you. Ooh, weird audio. So the thing that I like about this first one is the extent to which it separates the different bodies of water. And that is, you know, operationally, of course, that's important because every single one of these activities demands a different water temperature. And then you also have considerations like somebody has a little accident in the leisure pool. It doesn't mean you have to shut down the entire facility because the water is separated. And um, in addition to that, I guess sort of the, the other consideration is making sure that you're considering the ways in which events in one area might cut off access to other areas. And so having the competition pool, which is where there would be events, I would think more often having that in a place where you can really separate it off, I think is advantageous also. The, um, I think the, the one weakness I see on this is not separating the diving well, um, which is also different water really, if, if, if you're talking about competition diving. Thank you for that. Yeah. Does anyone else have thoughts? So I guess my question would be, do we have deep water for water polo? I mean, is there, a significant, is there enough deep water there to put in a full-size water, water polo pool or a synchronized swimming competition? Like how deep is that competition pool? What air I'm trying to mute. I am not able to mute. Um, so, uh, yeah, so the pool would, would uh, slope the pool bottom. Oh, there we go. So the pool would slope um, from kind of the top of the page down to the bottom of the page um, to get that diving depth. And then that would allow um, the lower half of the pool there to be divided for water polo um, or for synchronized swimming. We haven't worked out exactly what the depth would be, but that is the intent with the, with the 50 meter. So what, do you know what the water depth is at the midpoint of the 50 meter? I don't, we haven't calculated that. Okay, because I guess kind of what I was and, hoping to and see- And you said like, about safer, I'm sorry. I Hold was on, hoping Kyle. to see like a separate diving well with okay. more boards and that diving well could be of sufficient size to do water polo and synchronize swimming. How many boards do you think would be appropriate? I would shoot for like six, four one meters and two three meters. Keep in mind, this is a very tight site uh, and a very constricted site. And so uh, I'm taking these notes, I'm taking this into account, but that may be something we look at for, um, you know, right now what we're calling kind of the prototype facility where we would have more space for something like that. Uh, but I, I appreciate the, the comment. I have, That's uh, fair. I mean, I, I spend a lot of time in that pool and I know the site is tight. Has anybody talked to the school district about the possibility <laughs> with, as they're going through the facilities master plan of acquiring the um, old school building behind the site? Those conversations are ongoing. I don't believe they've gotten that specific uh, as to specific sites or specific buildings at this point. Um, but those conversations are ongoing. Um, they've started, they've been happening monthly. Um, and so uh, there is a lot of support for it. Uh, I just don't have any specifics to share today. I have a question uh, regarding um, when they do this, are they closing the, the current facility when they do this or are they gonna keep it open as long as they can? The intent would be uh, to keep the existing facility open as long as possible. And, and that's why we are building it sort of over Thompson as opposed to at the existing site. Thank you. I wanted to go, to go back if I could to the water depth question and just um, note that there's, you know, there's, there's a lot of kind of science that goes into water depth when it comes to competitive swimming and um, making, sure that, making sure that we hit whatever mark is desirable for that would be important for overall utility in the long term. Absolutely. Does 
does anyone else have thoughts on this? Because um, I would like to move on to the next one. Um, we can always come back um, if needed, but we're 10 minutes in and we have a few more concepts to get to. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. So concept two, um, you know, we've kept the competition pool at the front and here we do have a separate therapy pool or what we're calling a therapy pool. And this would be a warm water pool. Um, we've kind of co-located that with the competition pool, um, thinking about the demographics that would be using a therapy pool um, and the use of a therapy pool uh, didn't seem like it lended itself well to being included in the leisure pool area. Um, so the competition pool here is a 33 and a third uh, yard pool. Um, and so this is a, a 25 yard by 33 and a third. Um, and you can see there, um, there is a dividing bulkhead. And so this bulkhead can be moved um, so that this more compact pool um, can be used as 25 meter, 25 yard, uh, 33 and a third yard. It could be separated as shown here with a separate diving well or a you know, partially separated diving well um, so that the 25 meter swim could be occurring uh, while diving was going on. Um, and it also allows uh, that bulkhead allows the pool to be subdivided in half for two water polo matches um, that could be happening simultaneously. Um, and so this is really more of a multi-use pool. Um, the leisure pool here is a bit smaller, uh, but this leisure pool is intended to be somewhat of an indoor-outdoor. And so here you could see there's some spray park elements on the exterior um, and then uh, sort of that green line separating the outdoor and the indoor pool area uh, would be um, maybe some sort of operable wall, uh, garage door, some sort of um, wall that could be open with windows um, so that the indoor pool could become um, almost an outdoor pool in the summertime. Um, and so, uh, you know, that would allow sort of the back and forth between the indoor and outdoor and a year round use of that pool area. Um, again, we have the separate competition entry and community entry. Um, but I think those are the highlights of that one. Yes, Kyle? I like the uh, the, the concept too with the, uh, uh, it's a combination uh, 50 meter and 25 yard pool. I like the, the concept, it said three diving wells and Hello? Yes. Yeah. Three diving wells and, uh, and a ther therapy pool. And, uh, and I did like the concept one part too. too and, uh, and I wrote in, in the ch ch chat about uh, having underwater speakers for the synchronized swimmers too. Mm hmm Um, I think my concern was, well, a couple things. I think a therapy pool is a great idea if it's well programmed. And I think the best way to program a therapy pool would be a partnership with uh, someone like Ohio Health or Ohio State um, so that you're essentially providing an additional rehab space for them that could be used by the general public also. Mm -hmm. But my concern with this arrangement in terms of a therapy pool is that generally the temperature in a therapy pool is a lot warmer and competition swimmers don't want to swim in that soup. So um, I, don't lo I don't love the idea of a therapy of the same body of water. I think they need to be different temperatures. They are separated. They are separate uh, bodies of water. Yep. Okay. So I, I, I would add to that though. Um, the air temperature is a factor there as well. And yeah. um, I, I, have, I have seen leisure pool and therapy pool co-located co in an aquatic facility and it works pretty well. You, they kind of, you know, you, you put a little separate wall just to separate the space a bit, but it's not like an entirely different room. And I think um, when I saw the therapy pool located with the competition pool here, that's what made me think of you know, event programming in a competition pool being very disruptive to whatever goes on at a therapy pool. Like 
Like it's a very different clientele. Sure, thank you for that. We've gone back and forth about kind of where the best place is. We, we thought maybe the therapy pool folks wouldn't want to be in the leisure pool area, but maybe the competition pool folks wouldn't want the therapy pool people there. So we were, you know, really trying to uh, yeah. you know, figure out what the best place for that was. So I appreciate your I, feedback. I would say, look, look at how they did it at the Christiansburg Aquatic Center in Virginia, and you'll see a layout that really worked. They had yeah. that, these exact elements and um, they, they pulled it off. I would think more that the people doing therapy would not want to be co-located with the screaming spectators and swimmers or the screaming kids, not the other way around, right? Like I would think the therapy people would want to be a little bit off by themselves and have yeah. a little quieter yeah. space. Yeah, that needs to be a little bit secluded. Sure. Thank you for that feedback. I see the lanes kind of look uneven. How many lanes would be that for the for the competition pool for the twenty five meter, and then the and then I uh, don't know if it's a fifty meter or twenty five by meter by twenty five yard pool. Um, so we have ten lanes running up and down. Um, and that is the, the 25 yard uh, with the bulkhead as shown. Um, and I believe there are also 10 lanes going side to side, which would be the 25 meter. I appreciate the clarif uh, clarification. And then if you did the 50 meter pool, you'd have to divide the pool between two bulkheads to make it two 25 meter pools or or two 25 yard pools like that, the McCorkle. Correct. Uh, for this site, we were we did have that option one, which had the 50 meter pool. And so we also wanted to get feedback on this more compact pool uh, for this site, especially. Yeah, I think I think the, the, the more compact pool would, I mean, that's, that's sort of a, a squandering of, of space. If you've got an opportunity to put in 50, uh, you, you, you just should do it, we'll grow into it. Okay. What's the loss? What's the loss of space from concept one to concept two? If we, could, if we get the 50 meter pool, we can host a USA um, possibly host a USA swimming meet, and then they would have to use that small lap for the pool down. I think. Is your lap therapy? Any feedback on kind of the indoor outdoor option here? I think we're at no no loss for outdoor pool space in the city, and being that this is the only indoor facility, I don't I don't think an outdoor an outdoor option for this is really that important. I totally agree with that, Lane. Absolutely. It, it would be a squandering of an opportunity. I agree. Yeah. I also, want, I mean, I agree with um, maximizing the indoor space. Um, I just joined the call like 10 minutes ago, so I don't know any of the details, but um, as far as indoor and outdoor go, um, there's very little part of the year that you can really do um, outdoor swim. And also, you're not supposed to be outside in the sun between the hours of 10 a.m., and 4 p.m. I mean, that's, you know, guidelines from, you know, uh, dermatology associations, et cetera. So if you knock out those hours and you take out the hours of the summer, there aren't very many hours that you're supposed to be swimming that you're feasibly able to swim outside. Um, so I, I would just advocate for as much um, possibility for indoors um, opportunities. Um, I, I also wanted to ask about, um, I see zero, the zero entry. Is, is there an area for, for like sort of babies or toddlers or non-swimmers essentially learning to swim children? So we did not include um, separate baby pools in these options. Um, these all have the zero depth entry uh, pools. So currently um, the aquatic center has two separate pools. I mean, one is, is um, considered a baby pool and its maximum depth is like, I don't know, like three feet or two and a half feet or something like that. Maybe two. Yeah. Something. Yeah. Something where a, a, my four-year-old can walk across it 
she can walk across it. She can stand the whole depth and, and you know, comfortably have her head out of water. Um, so how many feet that zero entry, how much space is given or is it zero entry? And then, um, you know, will they be able to walk across the whole thing? I mean, where, where do children learn to swim? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the intent of that would be in the leisure pool area. Um, and so, uh, you know, we haven't worked out really the specifics of the depths of these. Um, we're trying to get feedback on the amenities. If you, um, you know, if that's a, a standard comment, I guess, to have about having a separate baby pool, that could definitely be worked in. Um, but the leisure pool, I believe, usually goes to about three foot six inches in depth. Um, they're not overly deep, and that is the intent that they're kind of standable for, for most folks. And I, I, I would also say that um, the temperature is a real problem. So the, the baby pool, I wear a wetsuit in the baby pool um, at Columbus Aquatics, a wetsuit. <laughs> so I just think, I feel that uh, the leisure pool and the connection to the zero entry and what I'm seeing, I just, my bet is that it's not going to be a pool at which you can take a two-year-old or a one-year-old or a, you know, or three and, and have them um, be at a temperature. My baby, I couldn't take her. I took her a couple times, my one-year-old. She couldn't tolerate the temperature in the baby pool. I mean, I was in a wetsuit, so it's not surprising that she couldn't tolerate it. You know, she just starts getting cold and I had her in like long sleeves and long pants. Um, so, I mean, the connection here, the zero entry to all of the stuff, is it, I mean, how, I mean, we, the water needs to be really warm if you want non-swimmers to be able to handle it. Yeah, so and, that's why we have the two separate pools here um, because the uh, competition pool in the blue uh, would be the colder pool because that's where the people are going to be really swimming in the competition uh, you know, area. Um, and so that water would be heated differently than the leisure pool area. The leisure pool would be a warmer pool. But a leisure pool for regular adults and swimmers and, and people doing that sort of thing or, or, or 12 year olds or something is not the same as a non-swimmer. And currently the non like I said, the non-swimmer pool, I'm an adult and I have to wear a wetsuit, but it, I mean, to heat, to heat, if it's going to be a large space, a leisure pool combined with that zero entry, to heat that, that pool to a temperature. And who goes there? I, I mean, when you go to that aquatic center and you go there at three o'clock in the afternoon, who is there? Or you go at 10 o'clock in, in the morning, who is there? Very old and very young. It's, 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 it's people under the age of four and elderly. <laughs> I mean, people are, you know, I mean, that's what you've got. So I mean, to maximize the usage during the day, you really want to have a space that people under the age of school, the under five crowd can, can utilize because they're going to be the ones utilizing it on a daily basis. As Deborah, well as I, I think you would, you would really like the therapy pool. That's going to be a lot warmer than either of the other pools. Right, but I don't think our baby is going to be allowed to learn how to swim there. That has been decided. I mean, that, that's the thing is where, do I, I wanna see an area where the, the at least 50% of the people that are going, the under four crowd, have an area that they can swim in. I mean, you go to all the other expensive complexes and that, that, that exists. Uh, what is I, mean, I, get, I guess I'm, I'm confused because you know, the whole leisure pool area is meant to be for all ages. Um, you know, we have the zero entry, the play structure, um, that's all very shallow depth um, with amenities for children. Um, you know, as far as where would they learn to swim? I mean, it would be in that leisure pool area. It might be in the basketball volleyball area. I mean, they're not going to be able to touch the bottom when they're two or three. No, um, no, no. I don't, I don't mean, it's not about just touching the bottom. It's about the temperature of the water. And if you're designing an area. Okay. I'll, I'll take that into advisement. We have to move on to the next concept. Um, I will say that water temperature has not been decided, but with uh, the two separate pools, the intent is that the leisure pool is warmer uh, than the competition pool. So I'm going to move on to option or to concept three. Um, so this one maintains the two separate entries again. 
Uh, this is rotated, that smaller pool, which I've heard your feedback on the 50 meter. So uh, maybe let's skip that for this one because we're running out of time. Um, and so this one puts uh, both pool spaces on the east side of the building. And so these are along Denison then. Um, again, um, like well, I said, the two separate entries. This includes a bit of an outdoor area. Um, there are some community gardens on the site. And so we wanted to look at an option that would preserve some of that. Um, this has similar amenities again in the leisure pool area uh, with the slide, the spray pad, the um, play structure and the zero entry. Um, are there any comments maybe on this as an option? No. Besides what we've talked about similarly. I, I, I like this. I like an option that maintains some of the zero entry in the, the leisure pool. Is it uh, by uh, 20, 25 meter by 25 yards. The leisure pool? No, the main, the competition pool is 20. So this competition pool is the same as the last that we looked at. It's the 33 and a third yard that provides for the 25 yard by 25 meter, but additionally the um, water polo and the, and the diving at the end. Yeah, where would be the spectator seating? Uh, so you can see it on the second level um, on the right hand side there. Um, we're showing uh, the open to pool below and then the spectator seating above. All of these options are, are two story uh, just because I, of the site. I see it because uh, I've only seen on TV uh, the new Upper Arlington High School pool looks amazing. It's 25 yards by 25 meters and it, they replaced the old high school pool which is six lanes and 25 yards and and the up up Arlington high school got a huge upgrade the sw swim teams and the upper Arlington swim club got a huge upgrade and i'm still waiting to hear from the the city up they're gonna do sunday swim uh swim uh, and they're also building an, an, an indoor pool with the rec center too. So for concept three, I, I don't see anything here that makes me like it better than one or two. Great. Great. Well, you said something about the pool being split into two water polo courses. What size are you using for a water polo course? Um, you know, I don't know the exact dimensions of that. Um, so it splits uh, right down the middle. Um, maybe that is for practice, but there is the option of uh, the bulkhead slightly different as shown. Um, and I think that's the 25, I can't remember if it's a 25 meter or 25 yard uh, water polo course. Okay, I'm just, I'm pretty sure that you can't split a 33 and a third yard pool into two full size water polo courses, but I'd have you to look up right. the dimensions. That may have been uh, two two pools for practice. Um, okay. and maybe then the competition pool was um, just taking kind of the majority of the pool. Okay. Thank you. Do you know where that size came from, that 33 and a third? I don't feel like I've ever heard that dimension. I've never heard of it either. <laughs> you know, I don't. I don't actually know. This is um, very similar to a pool that we've built um, for a university in Illinois. Um, that was really kind of this multi-purpose pool that could be used to kind of fill a lot of buckets, but it's possible yeah. that it, it's possible that it doesn't do any of those things well. Um, I, it's an option I, I think, and that's this, yeah, that's exactly the the phrase that was in my head. It's like it, <laughs> it does a bunch of different things, but pleases no one. Okay. And I, all I'm thinking of with a thirty-three and a third is there is no use for that length. Okay. And so you you have blocked yourself out of an entire dimension there. Like, um, for example, McCorkle Aquatic Pavilion, one of the smart things they did was it's a 50 meter pool, but it's exactly 25 meters across, mm -hmm. which is important because sometimes people want to train 25 meters for international competition. Um, American competitions are all 25 yards. And so that's that's where you bring in bulkheads. Um, to divide up the 50 meter tank, but it was just a very smart thing they did was to make the width of the pool also a usable um, mm -hmm. measurement. Sure. 
and I mean, this is good feedback. I, you know, I appreciate everything that you that you're saying. Um, we wanted to be sure that we're presenting enough options to you to get the feedback and the understanding of what's really desired. Because I know mm -hmm. when we met before, um, you know, we had talked about, um, you know, lap lanes in general and not really sizes or distances. So I appreciate all of this. Um, we are about to get kicked out of our room and back into the main room for sharing. Um, so I, I thank all of you for, for sharing with us um, and I'll see you back in the main room. Thank you very much. I enjoy the, looking at the concepts. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, so you're here for Tuttle Pool. Um, a lot of the community input uh, based, was based off of the survey, uh, our on-site on outreach, which was a picture for what you see here, and then the, um, the actual virtual engagement meeting that took place in the summer. So upgrading bathrooms was one. Uh, we wanted family-friendly changing areas, more shaded structures, uh, zero entry, water slides, pool space, Parking was a big one and some picnic areas. So this is the existing site. I'm sure you all understand where it is. Um, but right now there's six lap lanes. Um, we have leisure area in the center and we have this mushroom and we have um, a little bit of spray, spray parks on the located on the south end of the pool area. And again, we're around a lot of nice forested area, um, really nice scenic space. So if you look at concept one, um, the idea is to, so I'm not actually sure what building there will be there, but we are proposing that there's gonna be a parking lot on the north end of the site. Um, and uh, both ideas are showing that the uh, bathhouse would be located on the north end of, of the pool instead of the south, because that was another thing that we had talked about um, when we went on site, that the, the entry was very hidden and we wanted something a little bit more open. So having the bathhouse on north end and then um, this site is also quite complicated. It's a very tight site. Um, the floodplain is really, really tight on this on this area, especially along the north. So um, we're not exactly sure how much we can extend the pool along this area, which is why we have the building on the north as well. And then our zero entry would be more towards um, the this north area. So you're not really cutting into the land uh, on the north side as much because of the floodplain. Then, uh, you know, play, play, fe uh, play features, we have sp spray structures that are connected onto the pool rather than being separated um, as it is existing right now. Um, and a water slide feature and then some more shading here. Again, this is a very tight site, so it's kind of hard to get everything that uh, the, the community was wanting from, from this, but we're definitely trying. We want to hear your feedback on what you think is better or or not so good in these concepts. So with concept two, um, we're breaking up the, the bathhouse a little bit um, so that there would be a nice entry in between. And um, I think both of these sites actually, so this is actually existing, this concept one is keeping the six lap lanes. For concept two, we're adding 10 more lap lanes. And then uh, this one is, allowing for more pool area space um, for leisure, for spray. And then this is would be the zero entry along the north end here again. And then um, some slides, uh, slide, water slides with a runoff feature. And then some shading along that area. So uh, in both concepts, another thing that we heard was that uh, they wanted to keep the, the mushroom there. It's an iconic piece of the site. So in both concepts, we, we kept them. That's what, oh, it should be on there, but um, the, the mushroom should be here, located here. And it's more central in this concept too. So uh, let's, go, let's go back to concept one. Do you guys have any thoughts?
I have a question about concept two. Sure. So the, the lap lanes, they have changed direction in that, is that correct? Yes. So um, if someone is swimming laps, is there gonna be a wall at the end? Yes, there, there, there would be a wall here, I would assume, but um, here we're, we're connecting them. Maybe it could be a partition that, that could be openable. But I was uh, just thinking about kids doing swim team and stuff like that. And they're like doing flip turns, like needing to have a wall. Oh yeah. Yeah. Then, uh, I mean, that's, it's not on this concept, but I think that would make a lot of sense. This is Steve. I, um, uh, I appreciate the work that's gone into this, um, and I really th applaud the idea of adding some water features such as the slides. Um, the, um, uh, in terms of the lap lanes, um, I guess uh, when, when I've been swimming there in the summer, usually there's only two lanes that are actually open for people swimming laps. Uh, throughout the day. Um, and so uh, would the intent be to uh, actually have more lanes dedicated to lap swimming? Uh, yes. Have, yes, uh, I think that's that's the idea. Uh, when when we were out there, um, that was one concern that people had that there weren't enough um, lap lanes. So um, having more uh, opportunity to have uh, that separate lap lane would be would be helpful. So that's yes, that's the idea. Okay. Can we go back to concept one for just a moment? Absolutely. Is it? Um, I mean, it seems to me, it seems to me that, that the primary difference between the two is that that concept two is really a larger swimming pool. I mean, they're a, a larger pool. Am I correct? And yes. So, yeah. so there, uh, because otherwise there doesn't seem to be that much difference. I mean, you've got, obviously there's more lap lanes uh, in concept two, but otherwise most of the other features are are in both. So it may come down to an question of budget in terms of, and I realize we're not at that stage yet, but I mean, uh, that may have some influence on whether one goes with concept one or concept two. Yes. So uh, I think because Tuttle would need a new bathhouse as well, um, we're estimating, and these are very initial estimates right now, that they would be between seven and eight uh, million but uh, we haven't gone through the, uh, the precise budget of what these would be. And that's, that's our next step. Well, certainly the bathhouse needs to be improved. And uh, so I'm glad to see that. And I think uh, for kids and young people, having more of the water features and the water slides are really great. And, uh, uh, and then for us older folks, the ability to have lap lanes that are open uh, uh, also uh, are wonderful. So I, uh, I realize it is a very tight slide, the site and I'm hoping that, uh, uh, that indeed you can find a way to expand the parking because certainly uh, in July and August uh, on a nice day, those, that parking lot is overflowing. Yeah. It's a small break. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. I was just going to ask, so does concept two have a larger area of the zero depth entry? Is that the, major, the difference of the of what's going on there? I mean, I can see it's sort of been all rounded out, but do they both have the zero depth entry? Yes, both would have the zero depth en entry. Uh, this one would probably be a little larger. And there would have to be uh, a separation with the zero entry and the more leisure space, um, especially where the slide is. 
but yes, concept two has a has a little bit uh, extra zero entry than concept one would. So again, the concept one is kind of keeping to the existing pool space um, that's given and defined um, with adding a little bit more um, along the north side for a zero entry area. And concept two is just enlarging that pool area as much as we possibly can. I just out of curiosity, um, I guess the black dot right in the middle, that's supposed to be the, the mushroom? Yes. And then what is the, the circle with all the squigglies? I mean, what are the other two features? I'm just curious, Do you, can you tell? Yeah, so uh, the larger circle you see here are yes. um, their spray spray features. Oh, so, okay. and all three of these are actually different spray, spray features. So one of them is um, a dumping buckets and then the other ones are the, the spray, spray guns. Oh, okay. So these are gonna be something, and, and particularly the, the larger feature there is, is, is gonna be for the younger children. Yes. Give them great. I realize we're talking about Tuttle, and I don't want to take away from that. Um, is there any way to make any comments on the indoor facilities? Yes, there is. So um, if we do, are there any other um, yeah, yeah, yeah. ideas about Tuttle before we, if, if you guys want to talk about indoor pools, we can do that as well. All right. We also have the prototypes for the outdoors, if that's something you guys want to talk about too. But uh, we can go ahead and talk about the aquatic center concepts. So um, this is concept one. Uh, we would have a car drop off area along Denison here. Um, larger bus drop off um, delivery area along Fifth Avenue. Um, this would be an Olympic uh, size pool here along Fifth Avenue. Um, there's two entries and within all of the three concepts, we generally have uh, two entries, one along Denison and then uh, one, in, one here on the west side. So with this one, uh, we would have the community space along uh, the plan west side, I should say. Um, the plan west side here is community space, the leisure area is centered, and the competition area is along the east side. Anybody want to comment on that before we go to the next concept? Or should I just go through all the concepts and then we can discuss? Well, let me, again, this is Steve. Let me just say that I, I applaud the effort to, I guess it's not simply going to upgrade the existing aquatic center, but rebuild it. Uh, it, it. I'm sure it was a fine facility when it was constructed 50 years ago. When I've used it in more recent years, it's just kind of tired. Uh, and also, there is only the choice between a baby pool and, in a sense, lap swimming. And so this would accommodate um, I mean, I think either concept would accommodate all ages, so I applaud that. The idea of a, of a competition pool, again, Columbus City Schools, for the most part, um, they don't have their own swimming pools. I know there are some schools that currently use um, uh, the Aquatic Center as a place for, uh, for practices and so forth. So this would open up that, uh, uh, I think, to allow um, more young people to participate on swim teams. Uh, and, and I think the, again, having a leisure pool. Uh, all, so again, I, I applaud the work. And I'm also glad that, that given the fact that Columbus is growing, that you're considering the potential of some indoor facilities in other parts of the city too. Because I do think uh, the ability to exercise year round, be able to swim year round, uh, is, is extremely valuable. And many of the suburbs have this. And so it's great to see Columbus doing that too. So just general comments, go ahead. 
No, thank you. I appreciate that. And we did a lot of research when we were studying all of Columbus and uh, we we understand the needs of, of Columbus, especially because it's a growing population. So, and with all of these concepts, uh, we had a lot of feedback um, about the current aquatic center and how that should remain open so that there is opportunity for people to still use the aquatic center while this is being in construction because it is the only one that's in Columbus. So that's the idea for all three of these concepts is that construction, while construction would be going, we'd still have the current aquatic center uh, open. So here's the second concept. Um, so uh, before in concept one, we had an Olympic pool area. This is more of a combo pool. We've done this in um, previous uh, aquatic centers that we've done. And uh, it's basically a 25 meter um, lap lanes along with, um, what is it? The 25 yard lap lanes. Um, it basically can do a lot of things all at once. So there's diving areas, there's um, uh, volleyball and basketball courts, um, water volleyball, basketball courts, there's climbing wall here. And the idea is that you can use this pool in, in multiple ways. So within that, there's also a therapy pool uh, separated out in that area, support spaces in between the the competition pool area and the leisure pool area and then we would have community space um, more on the southwest planned southwest portion of the site and then concept three um, same pool uh, different it's um, 90 degrees and it's along Denison Avenue rather than on Fifth Avenue. And the idea here is that we have all of the pool space um, located on the south end here, planned south end, and the community space is separated. So there is a lot of residential area that's uh, on, along that uh, across Hunter Avenue. So the idea is that that community space would be a little bit of a buffer to that competition space that would be used and the leisure space that would be used on the other side of the site. And we would of course have an outdoor area. We, we know that Thompson uh, existing outdoor area has, um, there's, there's existing outdoor areas like a garden feature, outdoor feature, and we wanna keep that. So it would be nice to have that along the intersection of Hunter and Fifth, a little bit of outdoor space. So what do you guys think um, between these three concepts? Is there one that you see that is fitting to what you would like more or, and again, if you don't have, uh, you don't have comments now, we're gonna have these on our website where you can comment on them too. Could you go back to uh, uh, concept two? Sure. The, um, I, I guess this is off the top of my head, but I, I'm not sure I like this, the kind of the separation between the uh, blue pool and the, Leisure, leisure green pool with zero gravity. Um, I, I'm just, I'm thinking of families and um, the, the concept one and concept two kind of with, with the pools closer together allowed, if a parent wanted to swim laps, you wouldn't be that far from where your kids were, were in the leisure pool. I, um, I don't know. I, uh, and it also, it, the leisure pool there just seems relatively small. Um, yeah, so in this one, actually, uh, I forgot to mention that the leisure pool uh, would have an opening to an outdoor pool area. So oh. this, it would 
be a combination. If you wanted to, uh, we could have this separate uh, connect. So there could be garage doors that we open up and uh, there'd be access to the outdoor pool area too. Uh, and then there's a spray feature, feature that's uh, okay. outdoors. So that's why this one's a little smaller is because there's an outdoor pool area here too. But yes, I, I think that's that's a great that's a great comment about the support spaces kind of separating the families and, and the adults um, a little bit too much. But the idea here is that um, the locker rooms and, um, and the mechanical room storage would be shared between the two spaces. Right. Can you go back to concept one for just a minute then? Um, I guess, you know, in, in some ways, uh, I like concept one the best because you've got uh, the largest pool, so to speak. It probably would be the most expensive. Um, uh, and I, uh, I guess one of the things that, I'll that ought to go into the budget is how much use that competition pool would get. And I, and, and I don't know, uh, but, um, um. So the the idea with the con competition pool is Columbus is very central. Um, it would be amazing if we had high school competitions here in Columbus and having having a site that could support that. Um, I think our our idea with this is that if we build it, they will come. <laughs> So uh, that that was our that was our reasoning behind the Olympic Olympic size pools there. But yeah, I I definitely um, I I think it's important to have the Olympic link, length pool. Um, I'm noticing that in concept one, I don't see a, a therapy pool, but there's like the leisure lap pool, and I was one I I I think I would prefer or I I think people might use more the therapy pool than the leisure lap. Because if there's a, if there's lap in one place and there's lap in another place, I mean, if someone is swimming for exercise, I, I don't know that we need to, you know, worry about the length being too long, probably. And and so I, I think that, you know, a diving well, the Olympic length pool, something fun, and then something that is, you know, a warmer pool for therapy things. Um, would be my preference. Great feedback. Yeah, I think the um, having the Olympic length, I mean, right now the uh, high school state championships take place up in my hometown in Northeastern Ohio, um, which I think if we had something like this centrally, you know, cause right now all of the schools head up there, um, which is great for my hometown, but doesn't really make sense um, geographically. <laughs> if we had something, like you said, if, if we build it, you know, they will come like that would be, you know, just a, a nice selling point for us, I think. And I feel like as a city, at least, I mean, you know, we're, we're doing all this work to design all these new pools. At least one of the pools should be the Olympic link. Cause right now, I think the only other Olympic linked pool in central Ohio is at OSU. Mm -hmm. and it's also great for the kids' times because they don't have to turn as often. <laughs> <laughs> I had a, a question. Um, I know that, so at the current Thompson Rec Center, um, they have a specialized, and I don't know a lot about it, but a specialized boxing program. And I didn't know if any thought had been given to preserving that program into the future, because I think it's the people that participate in that, it's very special to them. There's someone, who's the famous boxer that teaches there? I don't know. Yeah, someone. Someone who I should know the name of, but I don't. Uh, as far as program programming goes, Kathy, if I'm wrong, please let me know. Uh, I don't think we plan on closing any programs that are successful, for sure. So I think 
um, th that's probably what where the community space would be, what the community space would be. So along with weight rooms and community rooms, we'd probably keep some of those uh, programs that are working in, in Thompson. Oh, you're muted, Kathy. Can you hear me now? Yes. Excellent. Um, just wanted to mention that um, right now we're focusing on the aquatic center. And there really is a whole nother step that's going to go into what we need to consider for the programming and really for the needs of the recreation in the community center. So this is just the beginning of the concept to address what we need for some surface water and, and the programming that goes with it. So don't think that this is the end. This is more the beginning of a conversation that's going to extend for a little bit longer. So just to kind of make sure that that's really clear. Yeah, thanks, Kathy. Agreed. So we have two minutes. Um, is there any any other general comments um, that you would like to present or talk about? I was just thinking of something going back to Tuttle. I'm assuming based on our knowledge of the site and much discussion over the years, and the lack of a diving well in the plan that is that nixed for now for real i we we're gonna go and we're gonna look at these a little bit more closely um specifically tuttle and marion franklin and we'll we'll make sure that um the features that we add on here are the features that we can add on here. So for now, I know it's not in either of these concepts, but if that's something that you think that would be great to have, I think we can we can definitely look into it a little bit more. I mean, it's definitely a problem now that uh, our kids swim swim team in the summer at Tuttle, and uh, they do diving as well. And so have, they go to swim team there, and then they have to go to a different pool to practice diving because there's not a diving well, mm -hmm. but we've been told that it's, you know, it's so close to um, the the river or creek or, or whatever, it's right there that they can't dig down uh, deep enough to build a diving well there. And so that's always sort of been our understanding. Yeah, so that's lovely if, if I could you know, in the past 50 yeah. years, technology has improved enough. Yeah, so yeah. It's very <laughs> desirable, but we, Shana, we've been told wanna, if you wanted me to step in for a second, I was yeah, just please. gonna mention that there are some really important site constraints that happen at Tuttle. So what we are going to try and do, um, as, as Sana was talking about, figure out how we can maximize the pool area so we can allow a lot more of the public to be able to use this pool because it's really been limited. Um, and we're going to have to make some difficult decisions on exactly what can go there because of the, the extent of the floodplain. I know this is going to close in just a few seconds. Um, is it Sana? Is that how it's pronounced? Yes, you Sana. Yep. Uh, do, you, do you want me to email my notes to you, or do you want to? Put We're going to go through the, the breakout. We're going to go on the main breakout, and then you'll just um, explain it there. Oh, okay. So what you should see on your screen now is the presentation. We're going to go through the gray parks and then the four pools listed here. So we're gonna be Dodge, Driving Park, Maryland, and Lincoln. Um, like Carly was saying in the original presentation, what we wanna do is basically go through each concept, go through pros and cons, um, get any other ideas that you guys have. And then um, we'll do that one for each concept at a time. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Actually, before we get started, can I have one of you guys be the reporter for this group. Um, basically, it's just taking taking some summary notes from this from this call, and then once we go back to the larger group, um, you'll basically just share a, a summary of what we talked about here. Could we possibly do introductions before that happens? Sure. So I'll go ahead and start. Um, 
Brent Hillenbrand. I work for uh, Legget Architects. Um, I'm an associate here and I've been helping develop some of these concepts that we'll be looking at. I can go, I'm Julia Applegate. I'm an avid swimmer. I use the city pools year round. Okay. And I work in public health. My name's Catherine. I used to work for the city pools. Um, I still take my kids swimming in the summer and they participate in swim lessons year round as well. Hi, my name is Brianna Ross. I am the coordinator of recreation and parks. I was the aquatics manager before I moved over over the summer. Um, and so I'm definitely interested in seeing how um, your guys' input, thoughts and feedback will definitely help us um, make a great aquatic system. Uh, my name is Walter Hardy. I live on the south side. I've been in Columbus for about six years. I serve the pools. I, I guess I was curious about the plan and, and, and what, and what uh, refresh is going to happen with the current facilities. All righty. Good to meet everybody. Um, so let's go ahead and we will we'll jump in. Um, is, it, does, is anybody interested in kind of taking some notes during this meeting and then uh, reporting back to the larger group? Not everybody at once. I could do it with the possibility that I may have to jump off before it's our turn to report. So, okay, sure. All right. Okay, so starting with Barnett Spray Park. Um, like Carly had mentioned, for all the spray parks, the biggest the biggest comment I think from our public engagement was a general lack of shade structures and seating, um, as well as some of kind of the actual elements of the spray park itself. Um, what you're seeing here in the in the general concept is essentially adding a couple of shade elements, um, and then trying to utilize the existing shade trees to add a little bit more seating, whether that's picnic tables, the round tables, and then adding shade structure where there's already existing um, picnic infrastructure. So I think for each one, I think we'll just kind of talk about each one as we go and any kind of general comments or questions that you guys have. Um, of either the community input or the design. Are the spray parks there, are they firmly set as spray parks? There's no question about adding pools or anything else at, it, at a spray park? Um, as far as I know from these studies, these three spray parks are just looked at as, as the spray parks alone. Yeah, as of right now, that's not in the the plans to add them to, to create pools. I know Blackburn Spray Park used to be a pool and that got changed into a spray park years ago. Um, but as of right now in this particular study, it's not looking at changing a spray park to a pool. Um, however, we are looking at, you know, where are the best places where there's currently not water access available and um, looking at those options, but not necessarily changing a spray park to a pool. Okay. Any other questions or comments on this one before we go to the next? No. No. Okay. 
Sorry for the background noise here. Um, Blackburn Spray Park, a very similar, uh, a similar uh, community input again was the shade structures and the seating. Um, this one is basic. The goal was to provide new shade directly off of the parking lot, um, so that parents and spectators are able to just kind of view the view the activity in the spray park um, for easy access. That looks sufficient if that was the goal. Okay. And then I think we'll jump to the last one here. Toyota Southland. Uh, similar concept here, adding some more shade, more seating. Um, and really leaving the you know the spray park layout and infrastructure um, intact, and then potentially using some of the shade structures to, um, you know, shade some of the walkways as well. Any questions or comments on this one? No. Is that all a grass area around there? Like it looks like that's part of it's in a big park. Correct. Right. There's it's a, a ton of grass area um, all around those walkways and this and the spray pad. So I'm sorry, I came to the meeting a little bit late. Um, I guess my general feeling about spray pads or spray parks is that they're they're valuable to people, but they also seem like a poor substitute for a swimming pool. And this looks like a space that has plenty of room to grow and it would be nice to see a pool added to this area. And, and again, I'm sorry, I don't know the where this is situated vis-a-vis -vis other pools that may be nearby. So if there are, if there is a nearby swimming pool, then that's perhaps irrelevant. But it just looks like a great space where you could do a lot more with it than just a spray park. Yeah, with the Scioto Southland location, it is on the, the far south side um, of Columbus. So if you know, um, like going like almost close to Hamilton Township High School, they're not far from that location, but just inside of the Columbus um, area, I guess you'd say. And, um, so the closest pool would be Lincoln, which is at um, off of uh, Woodrow, off of Parsons area, and then Marion Franklin, which is a little bit um, uh, east of there, which is closer to like 104 and Lockbourne. So it's about like a two, maybe three mile drive from the next closest, from the next closest from there as well. So there are some in that area. Um, as far as a pool right there in that space, I know uh, Scioto Southland used to have a very large flourishing soccer program for the rec center. And a lot of that grass space is what was used for the soccer field. Um, but not to say like, could that be a thought? Could that be an idea down the road in the future as Columbus grows? You know, that's always, you know, something to look at. But as of right now, because those other two pools that were about two miles away it wouldn't have an expanded pool here. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I will say there might be backlash with having shading over top of the sidewalk because you know people like to complain. So it'd be people sitting on <laughs> sidewalks if there were you no know, not enough seating just so they could yeah. be in the shade. And that would probably irritate some people that are trying to walk up and they'd have to walk in the grass around someone. That's true. Okay. Thank you. I'm just taking some notes here as well. All right. Um, if we start to move into the uh, the kind of minor upgrade pools, um, we'll start with Dodge Pool. Um, when we did the community engagement, I'm not sure if 
if you guys were involved in in some of these um, engagements, but essentially we, everyone was given kind of Im images to look at and provide kind of a basic ranking system um, of what elements people would like and what they would like to exclude. Um, and so for, uh, I think the major elements for this one that we looked at um, amongst this list, you know, more shade structure, more pool space, um, and what that looks like in the the upgrades you can see on the right hand side is the existing pool and then the right are the proposed changes so basically we're adding some additional shade structure in both corners of the site um, with additional seating so you can see the shade structures here and here um, and essentially adding adding some more hardscaping to kind of connect those areas to the existing pool um, additional seating. And then other items that were brought up were expanding the zero entry, um, as well as adding additional pool lanes and then trying to integrate other program like water basketball or, you know, something like water volleyball or something like that in, uh, now that there's more space inside the pool. Um, and then other minor elements like, you know, introducing some type of a climbing wall at the diving well. Um, and a potential addition, um, kind of a small addition or kind of a uh, mechanical area on the existing, um, the existing pool house. I absolutely love the idea of more pool space because that used to be an Olympic sized pool before it was redone and there was plenty sure. of room for people. And then once they redid it, it literally took away all the swim space like, cause it was so broke up. And then right. even where the lap lanes are now, you know, kids can stand up at one end, the other end's five foot, no one can stand up. And on, unless like they're planning on keeping these COVID restrictions and 150 people in at a time, that pool is not optimal at all as it is now for the, the need for the community. Sure. So I say, if they did open this up, that would be, that'd be a great idea. That looks like it's adding what another five lap lanes Correct, yeah. Yeah. And are these 25 yard lanes? Yeah. Correct. I completely agree. The more pool space you can create, the better. So if you guys have any more comments or we can go ahead and move on to the next one. Go to the next one. All right, so for driving park, um, the biggest, really the biggest components that were requested were shade features and then an additional two lanes um, to the main pool. So between the existing and this this concept design um, is is a similar similar in scope in terms of some additional hardscapes and walkways, um, using some of the existing uh, shade trees, adding some more seating, um, and then basically a ton of shade structures to allow for more spectating. Um, those are the main uh, main updates for driving park that we're looking at in these concepts. Those concepts seem reasonable. Is there anything that you guys see that you could add or anything that um, you might remove No, I have, I have so a I like all the added shade because people do need that. And a lot of people would prefer to sit in the shade when they're not actually in the pool. Sure. Can you, is it possible to add any more green space? Like it looks like 
some of the shade is just going over concrete areas. I assume there'll sure. be like, I don't know, picnic tables or something under there. Sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, the these are all just kind of a first pass at initial initial ideas for the kind of hardscaping and green space. So that's all all very much conceptual. So if there's any kind of like uh, picnic areas or other types of gathering spaces, they could definitely be integrated. So for Maryland pool, similar with additional shade, um, there was a request for water basketball. Um, and so here you can see those kind of direct changes from existing to new. Um, again, some more kind of integrated walkways between the existing shade structures. Um, the addition of a few more shade structures and um, also providing shade for the spray spray pad itself um, and providing some type of extension to the pool to allow for something like a pool basketball or a pool volleyball. And then in the bottom you can see here is a, um, a climbing wall again added to the, to the diving pool. That one actually looks pretty nice. And then if we can backtrack, did Dodge have like a shade structure over top of their baby pool area? They don't actually have a splash pad. They have like a baby, baby pool. Sure. That's not in the current design, but I think that's a really good, good idea. Because I think that only goes to like 12 inches deep. So, I mean, shade would be good for those little babies. Sure. I believe there's actually a an umbrella that's over in that area, but I don't I can't remember off the top of my head how big it is. Um, I know it doesn't cover the whole area, but I know there was like an umbrella towards like the edge. Um, not like as some big sort of shading. It. Yeah, it's a little bit. I think it was maybe more you know for use with lifeguards standing there, you know for you know for their their station or rotation. But it is still a good idea. I think, like mm -hmm. you said, uh, overall shaded canopy of some sort right let's go back here to question um sure. i wasn't quite sure what was meant when i selected the breakout room all other sites um but is there any plan at all in the city for an indoor or outdoor pool that is Olympic size. So, um, that, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, <laughs> I was just gonna say, um, there is a concept uh, for one of the outdoor pools uh, to feature potentially an Olympic size pool outdoor. Um, and then there's also the indoor kind of aquatic center um, concepts where that's that's being looked at also to provide a, a larger pool. Okay, and which one is, which outdoor pool is being considered, you know? Marion Franklin. Marion Franklin, okay. Mm -hmm. That'd be nice. It seems that many of these spaces I mean, many of these pools could have space for that, and it would be nice for the city to have a facility like that somewhere. Yes, for sure. And definitely through this process, that's been a really big um, topic of conversation is where if not with our current site locations, um, yes, Mary Franklin's being looked at that, um, but if if that didn't pan out, where where else is a best location that we're not currently already in as far as outdoor or even more so indoor? You know, there's a lot of Northeast areas 
that don't have any Columbus public open facilities in their area. And the closest things are, you know, going to a splash pad at Linden or maybe the Windsor location um, or being part of, you know, other agencies or organizations like the WISE or private clubs or something like that. Um, then you also have like the far east, far east side that doesn't have a public pool as well. Um, far southwest side doesn't have public pool, whether indoor or outdoor from us. So all of these kind of, like I said, dry areas are being looked at as how, what is most feasible, where is um, the first initial greatest need to try to get pool space in um, while still also making our outdoor facilities, you know, updated or to the current century for some of them and things of that nature. <laughs> Agreed. Okay, you, uh, anything else for Maryland before we go to the next one? Nope. All right, the last one of these kind of minor upgrade pools is Lincoln Pool. Um, shade structures, shade structures, and more pool space um, were uh, big asks for that as well. So in this concept, you'll see um, a much larger zero entry allows for a spray pad space and other spray features, and then a slight expansion to show a uh, pool basketball and then an additional two lanes uh, for swimming as well. And then uh, similar to the other schemes, uh, retaining the existing shade structures and then adding a couple more, whether that's at the zero entry itself um, to kind of shade the water elements or to provide another uh, seating area like on the north side here. This looks like a great concept design. And also with these basketball areas, how how deep is that water supposed to be? Or is that too much thinking into it for me? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. I'm, I'm not positive, to be honest. Okay, because I'm just looking at them in terms of like for swim lessons. Sure. If I know a lot of them are adding extra lanes, but is it like just for extra space if needed for larger classes? Yeah. Really good point. Yeah. So a lot of the space for, you know, like the waiting or the leisure pool, which is like those middle sections, a lot of times they're anywhere from 36 upwards to 48 inches deep. So three to four feet, just because that's typically the height that anyone can be able to walk through without having to, you know, really swim and be able to play basketball, touch the bottom and all that. But for sure, those spaces would be okay ideal for lessons um, for you know any age group I mean even adults because depending on their level um, you know having three feet where they know they can just put their feet down and stand while when they're uncomfortable is is a good training wheel for lessons absolutely so yeah so when we look at you know the basketball or putting um, even in the diving well where there's the climbing wall and things of that nature, it's still in spaces that can be used for swimming lessons, diving well, obviously for more advanced levels, um, if they're doing that. And then a lot of these leisure areas, still double duty or even triple duty for water aerobics maybe, or lessons or, mm -hmm. the, or, or basketball. Gotcha, okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, look, we have three minutes left in the breakout. Um, so if you guys are good on this one, we can go and just, we can take a few minutes and look at the um, outdoor prototype concepts, which are kind of, at this point, are kind of sightless um, and kind of talk through, talk through different concepts for kind of a, a potential brand new outdoor facility in terms of layout. Um, in this concept, you'll see, I guess between the two concepts, you'll see a lot of commonalities. So one is the, it's a, a much larger kind of extended diving well 
um, that's separate um, in both schemes. Each features a climbing climbing wall. Um, the large zero entry that, that comes right off of kind of the pool house or the bathhouse um, with the play structure. And then that goes into kind of a waiting area and that feeds the other larger pieces of pro program like the lap lanes, the bas uh, water basketball, uh, obviously a large slide. And then we've, we're have we currently showing a, uh, it's essentially a larger spray pad, one that's almost as big as kind of a spray park. Um, okay. And then we've heard a lot of things about the spray parks being kind of you know, places where people have a lot of birthday parties. So we're trying to, you know, provide shade structures um, around certain pieces of program to provide different areas of gathering around the site, whether that's, you know, underneath or between with different tables and, you know, having different shade trees kind of strategic along the border. And then just to show you the second one, um, similar in some of the, a lot of the ideas are the same in terms of what, you know, what's adjacent to other pieces of the program, um, but just a different site layout, um, a different way to kind of look at the shade structures and um, how some of the, how some of the items are kind of turned versus the other program. I like this concept too, much better. Like yeah. I understand a lot of people like the steps to walk in, but I feel like it, takes up water space unnecessarily and this I mean I see that would still be like the concrete divider to separate the little spray area from the rest of the pool which is plenty right. fine instead of having that so broken up that it sure. like disrupts the plan for swimming sure yeah that's a good point I totally agree I like the way that even between the lap lane and where the basketball area is it feels more connected sure and this is are these are always 25 yards unless otherwise indicated right yeah. for these outdoors that was the that was the intent with eight lanes. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we are at the end here in terms of the breakout room. Um, but thank you for joining this room and for the for the input. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. So um, let's start with um, the um, all other sites, let's call it. We'll just go through in order how we had it here in the PowerPoint. So um, Brent, who was your reporter? That was me. Great. Um, so feedback on the spray parks or should I start at a different site? Oh, you can start at the spray parks. We started there as well. Great. Um, generally, our comments were appreciative of the additional shade. Um, some, I, I added a point that Scioto Southland looks like it has a lot of space in that facility for maybe a future swimming pool to join the spray park, but generally we were happy with these additions and didn't have much comment beyond um, appreciating the additional shade. Great. How about on the pool? Um, so we liked the addition of more pool space overall. And if I get something, if I forget something, can somebody from my group please jump in? Um, we noted that for the basketball, the addition of the basketball spaces, um, that those are also can serve as good spaces for additional lessons that might happen. Um, so we appreciated that. We liked the addition of the, the shading in these areas. Um, we talked about the need for the addition of a 50 meter pool at some point somewhere, um, but it didn't look like that would happen with any of these spots. I 
think our general feeling was um, when we can gain more pool space, we're happy and that there's always the need for shade and spectator space. Thank you. Anyone else from that group um, have something that they'd like to share? I just want to say there was a good comment that was made too about emphasizing green space where where possible and providing extra program like picnic areas or or something like that. Great, thank you. Okay, next. Also, um, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say we took a minute and looked at the two different concepts for a completely new pools, sure. and our group favored concept two. So I don't know if we were going to talk about that right now, but um, I think we'll combine all the comments maybe at the end. Um, okay. So we can have your comments then um, if there were more specific comments related to them. But thank okay. you. Yeah. Thanks. So Glenwood and Windsor, like I said, we weren't um, really going to discuss too much. Those are already well underway. Um, next, we have Tuttle Pool, who is our reporter for that room. Hi, this is Steve. I'm reporting. Um, I think we were appreciative of the design work that's gone into Tuttle. Um, in concept two, uh, it was noted that uh, the um, lap lanes needed to have some kind of wall on both ends so that the swimmers can make, um, can make the proper turns. Um, and uh, I think we were appreciative of the zero entry uh, and the additional uh, uh, water features, particularly for younger children. Uh, there was an interest in having a diving well at Tuttle, uh, although there may be uh, problems with the site that would, would prevent that. Um, and, uh, uh, the idea of having the bathhouses, the bathhouse upgraded um, was a good one. I think that about covers it. Was there any conversation about um, kind of the relocation of the entry of the site? I mean, was that uh, a, a good change, do you think, or maybe not so good? Well, you know, that didn't come up, although uh, um, I think for those of us who've used Tuttle, and I've gone to Tuttle Park for 40 years, um, it's, uh, you know where the entrance is and it, you know, so you, you don't realize it, but I, but you know, in retrospect, you're right. It's, if you didn't know where it was, you, you might have trouble finding it, but it, it did not come up probably because those of us were already familiar with Tuttle. Sure. We were sort of discussing here how we could see where the parking lot is and we were trying to figure out if you had to drive through the apartment complex parking lot to get to the Tuttle parking lot or if there was some other entry that just wasn't visible on the on the view. Um, there is a road kind of just above where we've cut off um, that that goes sort of just to the north of um, those buildings. Um, and I believe the intent would be that you could just drive straight into the parking lot through there. Um, any other comments from the Tuttle group? Can you address the issue of a diving well at that site? That is something we'll need to look at. Um, it is a very tight site. Um, you know, it borders the floodplain um, and with the river being right there, I mean, that's kind of why we have in both options the zero depth entry situated on the west side um, just because of uh, those those flooding issues over there and so um, kind of digging a deep diving well um, or even a lap lane depth um, wasn't really going to be feasible on that side of the site which is why we put it um, on the east side so I think it's something that we can definitely explore um, if it's a high priority um, then we should definitely look into it. Thanks for those comments. Um, next then was Marion Franklin, who is the reporter for Marion Franklin. Carly, there was um, no attendance to the Mary um, Marion Franklin uh, breakout room. Oh. So All if right. we want to, I figure what we can do is just go through some of the concepts and just present in general to the group. 
Okay. Uh, I don't want to reiterate too much of what you introduced, um, but it, the concept one is extending the site on the west and south uh, for more shading. This is a large flat site, so there's plenty of room for expansion. The uh, which it does allow for an Olympic sized pool, as you mentioned earlier, and, and an extension for a pump house, uh, the bathhouse will stay the same. There is a zero entry pool and basketball, but as far as uh, other discussion items uh, to expand upon what, um, what you mentioned in your introductory presentation, I don't have any other comments to it, but I'm willing to field questions if there are some. Could someone explain to me a little bit about in concept two, like the two sets of lap lanes there and how they differ? Sure. Um, so currently, um, at the majority of the pools, um, you know, I think most of them have six lap lanes, um, and so four of them at least um, are kind of closed during the majority of the day, um, and that those lap lanes are used as just general leisure pool area um, or sort of multi-purpose pool space, um, and so that only leaves a lane or two for lap swimming for the majority of the day, um, and so the intent here was to have um, you know, the six lap lanes that are separate that would be dedicated lap lanes all day. Um, and then you would have the four lap lanes that are included with the leisure pool area um, that those could then be used um, you know, during early morning lap swim um, or something like that. Uh, they could have those lanes open as lap lanes, but then um, when the pool itself maybe opens for the day when families come, um, then that could just become an extension of leisure pool area. But this way we have dedicated lap lanes. Um, similarly on the 50 meter, um, there would be an opportunity for a bulkhead um, to separate. So you could have uh, the 50 meter swim for that open swim or for certain occasions, uh, but the bulkhead could be uh, used then to divide the pool so that you could have those lap lanes dedicated um, for part of the day or the majority of the day. And that then, uh, so you have 25 meters dedicated for the day and the other 25 meters could become an extension of the leisure pool. Uh, but Marion Franklin did provide a lot of opportunity to maintain lap swimming, um, you know, for the majority of the day with these, with these two options. Any other comments on Marion Franklin? Okay. Thank, thank you for the comments in the chat. Appreciate it. Thanks, Dennis. Um, so finally, we've come to the Aquatic Center. Um, so our reporter will fill you in on what we talked about. Hi. Um, we were presented with three concepts. Um, I got to tell you, I was so impressed with uh, many of the comments. Uh, I have, I swam, uh, I continued to swam at the uh, indoor facility for a while, and uh, I didn't get into the drill down into some of the details uh, this group did. We were presented with uh, three concepts. Uh, the first one uh, was for the, uh, and please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, was the large, it was a 50 meter pool. Uh, correct. And, uh, you know, zero entry. I don't think there was any discussion about zero entry as we're building new pools these days. Uh, this kind of concept is, is pretty much standard anymore. Um, there was some concern uh, during the discussion about the different pools, the different temperatures. Uh, in my opinion, temperature is very subjective. No one is going to be happy with, with various temperatures. I can tell you some stories about that. Um, concept two was the smaller uh, 25 meter uh, concept that also might have had, uh, there was talk about having some kind of outdoor indoor capabilities. Um, and um, I think most of the group uh, didn't feel given the time frame of uh, outdoor swimming, uh, you know, just for a few months out of the year that 
probably it wouldn't make sense to put our money into removable walls and uh, all of that. I'm also wondering about certain security issues. I'm not sure. But most of the group kind of nicks that idea. Uh, the third concept was, uh, I think this was the 50 meter pool that was reoriented. Now, all of these uh, concepts are have been moved right up to Fifth Avenue, uh, as opposed to uh, you know being back down into Denison. Uh, so that was interesting, just just for visibility purposes as well. Um, most of the group that at least in, were involved in that, uh, I think they liked Concept Three, but they didn't believe that it was as good uh, as Concept uh, One. So. I think the group really has is uh, kind of circled around this 50 meter pool. Uh, the idea that it has flexibility, you can put bulkheads in, uh, you can move it for uh, all kinds of uh, multiple activities. So uh, I think that's where we're at. Thanks, Jay. Did anyone else want to um, comment? Yeah, because the uh, I think the 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 concept one is a winner in my in my opinion. You could do more with a 50 meter and, and divide it up into two 25 yard poles, two 25 meter poles. Just have the uh to tw uh 50 meters and still people sw swimming at 25 yard or 25 meter. I've seen that uh, on New where Indiana University uses their 50 meter pole, but they <laughs> use their Five yard or twenty five meter pool to for the, the that has more uh, uh, lanes. Uh, if it's a if it's eight lane fifty meter pool, it's seventeen lane the twenty five yard pool will be used. Uh, for example, and yeah, I think the general consensus of the room was really to maximize the area of water and that this more compact pool uh, was not really desired. Anyone else right, want to comment? I like the fifth pool. This is Steve. And uh, in our uh, Tuttle Park pool group, we discussed the Aquatic Center a little bit. And uh, uh, there was strong support for an Olympic sized pool, feeling that. Uh, it was something that Columbus needed because there were no other options except Ohio State, and obviously most of the public can't swim there. Um, there was uh, also a suggestion that uh, uh, along with an Olympic pool, there also needs to be a, a warm therapy pool. Uh, I think that's included in one or two of the concepts. Um, and uh, in concept two, uh, I disliked the separation of the lap pool from the leisure pool area. Um, I, I felt that, uh, I mean, I understood that the need for locker rooms and so forth, but I thought particularly with families with different ages and so forth, uh, parents would be more comfortable if they were able to more easily see their children in the leisure pool if they were in the lap pool. Um, just a thought. Yeah, I to that, totally agree on that. Like there was some it, discussion. They have that. to be they have to be separated by like a door or a glass or something just for temperature control. But yeah, they, they shouldn't be actually far away from each other the way it is in concept two. But there was a there was some ideas about separating the therapy pool. Uh, and that really had to do with uh, noise and you know activities. You know, the whole concept of a therapy pool is just to be kind of quiet. Uh, and with the uh, competitive pool, there's going to be a lot of noise as well as the leisure pool. So I think that was some of the things the group were discussing. Yep. And I just want to, this is Deborah, I just want to add that I, I'm very disappointed that there's no um, toddler pool or baby pool. I see that as a, a huge missed opportunity and actually a, a downgrade from where we are right now. Well, let me just say this, um, and this is something that maybe the designers might consider. Um, we have seen pools, outdoor pools, I think at Upper Arlington, well, some other places where you actually have uh, a zero entry that kind of curves over as part of the pool. 
into kind of a, uh, a, a children's space. And that may be something that we could do without having a separate pool. What are your thoughts on that? Well, the, the issue is that a, a baby pool or a toddler pool is, you know, 90 to 95 degrees. And whenever you have a larger pool, you're just not going to be, I mean, I seriously doubt they're going to, they're going to heat the leisure pool to 95 degrees. I just. No, they're not. <laughs> so, so, uh, I mean, it's just, a, it's a, you know, and someone made a comment that, you know, baby pool outdoor sits, uh, sits unused, but when it's 80, 90 degrees outside, you can take a baby into, um, you know, one foot, you can do a zero entry depth and you can take your baby into one foot of water, even if the water is cold, if the air temperature is 80, you know, you're not, the baby isn't going to get that cold. And also outdoors, really, you take your baby to a pool, baby's not, I mean, with the sun, you can't really take your baby for longer than half an hour or something like that. Different than an, um, an indoor pool where you actually can put your baby in water. So I just, I'm, I mean, we have a, I mean, there's a therapy pool idea, but not a baby pool. I don't understand. I just don't understand. One of the, one of the, I'll, I can tell you as like a former lifeguard that I think that one of the issues that um, separate baby pools present is that it require, it, it pulls parents away from a slightly older child that still should be supervised, but should not be in a baby pool. Um, in a way that like in a zero depth pool that like a parent can kind of, um, more effectively supervise both kids at once. So if you have a one-year-old and a three-year-old or a one-year-old and a five-year-old, they have different needs for the water. And if you have a separate baby pool, the parent's going to go with the one-year-old, right? <clears throat> um, well, actually a one and a five-year-old both should be considered non-swimmers. I mean, even if the five-year-old tells you they can swim, they really exactly. should be. Exactly, that's, why, they that's, really that's should be. why they need to be in the same body of water. But they really should be in a, a toddler. They, they should be in a non-swimmer pool, a toddler pool, you know, a two-foot, a three-foot pool. They should not be in a, uh, with adults swimming for leisure or with 15-year-olds swimming for leisure. And the temperature, again, the temperature, because they're, sort of non-swimmers, the temperature, it's, it should be warmer. I, I don't understand how we have a therapy pool, but not a, you, whether you call it a toddler pool, a baby pool, a non-swimmer pool, and it can have lots and lots of water features. I mean, you go to Zumbezi Bay and their toddler, you know, maximum footage of like, I don't know, one foot. <laughs> so it's a, it's a, it's a waiting thing. And they have lots of different play structures and slides and splashy things and things squirting or whatever, but it's one foot of depth. And, we, you know, it's very warm because, you know, it gets, it's so shallow and the um, sun. Heats. But I, I just, I, I think that this kind of toddler enclosed, shallow, warm water, I would think of as pretty standard for an indoor aquatic facility. And I want to say that it's utilized, like kids are there, small people. When I go, I see small people there at the aquatic center during the day. They are heavy users and to not represent them, I don't understand. We'll take it into consideration when we're re reworking these concepts. I mean, really the intent of the zero entry area is that it's for that age group. Um, and it has that heavy supervision. And, uh, you know, as someone mentioned, you know, these are diagrams. I mean, these are blocky diagrams for us to kind of understand maybe how the space would lay out. But you're right that the zero entry area would be shielded in some way from the rest of the pool so that it wasn't kind of a free run into the rest of the pool area. Um, but we'll consider um, looking at baby pool options as well when we rework this. Um, were there other concepts on the uh, indoor pool at the aquatic center site um, from the other groups that we want to uh, hear from? 
Hi, um, this is Klaus. I'm sorry I was a little late, but one thing that always bothered me at the current indoor situation is that uh, for the swimmers in the mornings, um, there's that separate door, the separate entrance, and then people walk with their shoes into the aquatic area. If there is a smart concept where you can have a separate entrance for mornings so you don't have to open the main door, but at the same time create a space where people can take their shoes off so they don't walk with all their shoes in that area, that would be greatly appreciated. Which, um, I agree. What, like, what, what area specifically do you mean? Um, like onto the pool deck or uh, somewhere else in the building? Where is it? Well, so the door actually gets you right into the pool area, right? So oh, you enter oh, on the side that. door and then with your street shoes and oftentimes in winter, it's salt on your shoes, it's snow on your shoes. It's like all that slush. And then you bring that straight into the pool area. And I think there has to be a smart concept of a separate entrance that allows for people to take off their shoes or, you know, like their clothes in a way that gives them quick access to the pool, but at the same time prevents all that runoff, that salt, that slush to enter that pool area. Yeah, absolutely. I would say that that probably would not pass any sort of codes currently um, if we did design it that way, but I think that's a great, that's a great comment. Thank you. Could you flip it back to the concept one for this? I, I'm curious about like, so to his point, the entry into the pool. So there, I think the reason that the people entered directly into the side door is because the staff numbers are low. So there's essentially like an, a lifeguard and they're already in the pool area. So they don't have someone in the desk area. So like, how do you envision um, people entering this facility? Like, are they is all the entrance at one point and they are, um, like you're still gonna check in at a desk, but it, I, I guess I'm thinking from a staffing perspective and I don't work at this pool, but like that has to be something that is important to the people that do. Um, Yes. When they're talking, when you're, when it's 5.30 in the morning and your staffing is minimal, where do people come in and out in a way that all of the pools are supervised, all the used pools are supervised, and also are the, um, are entering the pool in a way that keeps the pool deck clean, to the previous speaker's point. Yes, absolutely. Um, I will say that all of that isn't worked out at this point. Um, but I would say that, uh, in, uh, you know, at all points of the day, the main entry would be what you see there into the community space um, on the left hand side. Um, the competition entry, um, I, I do see now that it is shown that it looks like you would go directly into the pool area, but there would be a vestibule um, directing you sort of into the locker room area. Um, so. Uh, members of the public that come in, um, not specifically for a meet or being dropped off for a meet. Um, would enter through the, the community space where then they would filter into the locker room. Um, and the locker rooms, of course, would have a wet side and a dry side. Um, so they would come in through the dry side, filter through the locker rooms, you know, change whatever they need to do, and then go into either um, of the, the pool spaces. Um, and so I don't think that it, it would, we would even consider an option that would have um, direct you know, off the street entrance into one of the pool areas. Um, I mean, you're correct. They would come past the desk, they would swipe a card or check in somehow, um, you know, and so having that one main point of entry be on the left there at the community space um, would then allow a single person to filter people, you know, to their different areas of the building and to maintain security. Absolutely. We're and talking about locker rooms. I didn't bring this up because I didn't think we were at that point but I would also suggest that we see at least in the competition and leisure areas that there be wet bathrooms off the pools so you don't have to go all the way through the locker room to take your kid to the bathroom or for the swimmers to go to the restroom that there be pool facing you know and again I don't know how we do this gender wise family style whatever but there be bathrooms directly accessible off the pools for the people using the pool. Great idea. Oh, thank you for and, that. Uh, one other comment, this is Klaus again. Um, so the uh, mayor just jumped fully on board of the climate action plan and there will be a big announcement this week about this. 
Um, and so in this day and age, when the city is committing to carbon reduction of over 45%, uh, my main concern for an indoor pool is obviously energy use. So a 50 uh, meter large pool, one size pool, the temperature, if there's any calculations on actually the additional energy used to heat that up to like a leisure pool temperature and what that would cost in terms of energy if those pools were separated to a, you know, like a lane uh, pool and the leisure pool separate uh, and total energy use overall in terms of design, I think would be a big effort. And I think there would be a big pushback from the community if that were not a up to the standard energy, minimal energy use design pool. Um, and would make the mayor and the sustainability office look really, really bad. Yeah. Thank you for that. We are definitely not at that point yet, but I, I do appreciate those comments and it's something we'll take into consideration as we move forward. Should we next go to um, some of the prototypes? Um, so let's keep going with the indoor facility. Um, what were the thoughts on concept one? And uh, I know my room did not get to these concepts. Um, so I'm happy to go through them if other rooms as well didn't get to them. Um, but if you did, I'd love to hear your comments. We didn't get through them either in our, in our breakout room. Okay. So I guess we, we saw a large indoor concept and a smaller indoor concept. And I'm wondering yeah. if there's an either or going on here, or, you know, we talked about conversations with the school district. I know your firm is running both of those processes. Mm -hmm. um, if the city's maybe looking at a large facility, the large concept, and if we can't look at some kind of partnership where in addition to that, we build a couple or three of the smaller ones in conjunction with new high schools that may or may not be getting built in the next 10 years. Um, and where, where are we thinking about this? Like, you know, there was, there was talk about um, a swimming pool at the, um, the old Mapri Stadium site, right? So making a part of that new sports park, but I know there was an article in the dispatch today with some drawings and it didn't look like there was A, a pool there, or B, any room to put one in around those soccer fields. Um, there was talk about the park up by the airport that they're talking about. Um, I've heard the Burgess Staple property mentioned. Like, where are we thinking that these might go? We have not talked specific sites. Um, I don't know. Maybe you, I don't know if you can see the screen. Um, so we've identified kind of a few areas of the city. Um, so we're looking at uh, the southwest side of the city. Um, you know, Sullivan Avenue, Georgesville Road, out that way, um, as being an area of the city that has a fairly dense population and no pools. Um, we're also looking at the southeast side of town, um, kind of south of Reynoldsburg, Blacklick-ish, um, out towards kind of Pickerington, um, that area of the city, kind of a wide swath of area. And then we're also looking at generally uh, the entire north side of the city. So North Linden, um, north of Clintonville, um, Graceland, um, kind of basically from uh, Westerville and uh, Worthington South. So I guess I would push back a little and say that your map of those areas that you showed us is based on all of those outdoor facilities. And that if you're talking about indoor water space, the entire city is devoid. And yeah. that if we're only going to talk about one facility, rather than those areas that don't have a pool being the priority, I think where we centrally located for easy access, easiest access from the entire city is more important because the whole city is devoid of indoor water space, Agreed. not just those areas that you've locked in on that map. Yeah, exactly. Considering the, the concepts that are being discussed for the, uh, the schools, so like for instance, in Southwest, the one the two schools of West and Briggs were going to be combined and they were going to need to build a new space. So I don't, I feel like it would be a great idea to when that new high school space is built that it includes a pool in that same building. Sure. 
uh, like I said, those conversations are ongoing. I don't, I, no decisions have been made. I know the uh, schoolmaster plan is still ongoing and there no decisions have been made. So I can't really speak to um, specific sites that we're looking at. I can just tell you that, um, yes, this map is generalized to cover kind of all the, the pool facilities. Um, you know, the light blue here is the spray park, the, the medium blue is the outdoor pools, and then the black is uh, the aquatic center. So um, I appreciate Michael's comment about uh, having indoor facilities be central locate, centrally located, um, easy Thank to access, uh, and that information. But when we look at the city as a whole, we also have to, to, to say that there are areas of town that do not have access. Uh, to aquatic facilities. And so I don't want to get kind of hung up on where these are going. Um, and I don't want to think of it as an either or. It's either the big one or the little one, or it's this outdoor site or the, it's this outdoor site. I mean, we want to get your feedback on, on all of them. Um, we know that maybe the smaller facility isn't the most desirable, but if the opportunity comes up for us to place a small facility, we'd like to be ready and know what size site we need and what size building we're looking at and what that's going to cost. So um, I would like to hear, I guess, feedback maybe on on some of the, the um, ideas shown in these concepts. Early, but for any for any when we talk about potential indoor facility, we're talking about a facility in addition to the, the aquatic center, correct? We're talking about a facility separate from the aquatic center, yes. Okay. And it could be located in those uh, sort of black bar areas that I indicated on the map. It could be, uh, you know, co-located somewhere else. It could take the place of, you know, it could go on existing parkland. We don't, we don't know where that is. Um, but we wanted to kind of do our due diligence in having a large concept and a small concept so that we didn't have to say, well, we only have this large concept, but we have this site that can't support it. And so now we can't build a pool. Um, and I, I will say, I mean, both, both concepts have the 50 meter pools. Um, you know, one has 12 lanes and one has eight lanes. So there's a difference there. Um, the smaller concept has a much smaller leisure pool area um, than the larger concept. The larger concept includes um, separate leisure lap lanes at 25 meters that could be dedicated, um, you know, lap lanes uh, in that area. Um, I know we just talked in the concepts for the indoor facility um, that having kind of views from the leisure pool to the competition pool and vice versa is desired. That does happen in both of these. Um, these are both kind of envisioned as a story uh, or a two-story space um, that would include, you know, community space, but obviously the smaller concept includes uh, much less community space. Uh, and that would be a much more aquatic focused facility um, that could maybe fill the needs of a region versus the whole city. So um, I don't know, did, did any of the groups get to this? It didn't sound like so. So I'm happy to hear feedback um, or we can move on to the outdoor concepts because I know there was some feedback on those. With so few oh, I would indoor say facilities, I think if we're looking at the possibility of having an additional indoor facility, it should focus its main focus should be to be an indoor pool facility as sure. opposed to having indoor outdoor capabilities, other community recreational spaces. I mean, Columbus is four times the size at least of any other city surrounding it. And all of those other cities have at least one indoor pool facility. And we also have one, whereas by comparison, we should have four. We only have one. So we need to focus on that. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. I mean, I, I live around Upper Arlington. Uh, they've got three outdoor pools. They're going to be having a, uh, you know, the high school was mentioned is, is a world-class facility. And we're also, they're building a, uh, you know, a community center, which is going to have us. So I'm thinking Columbus is growing. Upper Arlington is not growing. Columbus is continuing to grow. And uh, I really do think we need to have the kind of facilities that are endemic of, of the kind of, uh, you know, city we are and we're come becoming. I appreciate that there are, you know, you got two different concepts that can fit in different spaces. Um, I think 
I would have a lot of the same feedback on this concept one that I had on concept one for the aquatic center. Uh, just that, you know, it's, it's nice that it's separated and everything. And I would also uh, echo what the guys just said about focusing on blue space. You know, we, we got green space, let's get blue space now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for that. We did hear a lot of feedback about having, you know, co-located amenities that uh, people may want to lift and then swim or vice versa. Um, and having those located together could be um, a good opportunity. Um, but I do understand what I'm hearing about really focusing on, on aquatics um, over the community aspect of it or the community center aspect of it. Carly, you said both of the, in both of these concepts, the competition pool is 50 meters? Correct. Okay, that's good. Are there any other uh, comments on these indoor concepts? Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, because the, and, and also, like I said about earlier about the uh, Indiana pool, and then like at McCorkle, uh, Chris crossed the lanes between the 50 meter and 25 meter and or yards, and the, like other pools, I uh, we get got to use what we um, yeah, that would uh, that would be the 25 yard. The crisscross that would be good for many swim teams, like uh, regular, not just youth swim teams, also master swim teams too, because that would be be uh, a good a good th uh, thing. And then we'll still have the the divide ball, the bulkheads like we had the McCorkle and stuff. Yeah, I think that's definitely the ideal, um, and I appreciate I appreciate that feedback. Thank you. Um, so finally, we have the two options uh, for the outdoor facility. I know um, that at least one of the groups got to discuss these. Um, not sure if the other groups did as well, um, but I'd love to hear your feedback. Our group actually got to talk about this one. And then I pointed out in concept two, it makes a lot more sense instead of having the stairway, which breaks up the pool a little more, and it was kind of unused hard space for no reason. Um, and just to use the little concrete barrier so that there was still more swim space for people. Thank you. Are there any other comments on these? Or anyone from um, any of the groups have any thoughts? Any thoughts on having um, splash pad amenities at the pool, sort of separate from the pool area? I think that splash pads in addition to pools is a fine idea, but I don't love the idea of replacing pools with splash pads, which seems to be the current trend, or at least recently in the I think uh, learning to swim is important. And if we take that opportunity away in certain neighborhoods, because it seems like the cheaper, safer option. I think we are selling our city short. Yeah, thank you. Yes, she's exactly right. When I take my kids to a splash pad and there's a pool right next to it, they're gonna wanna go to the pool every time. A little bit so of spray I, water is nice for break time. So when everybody comes out, I, I, I usually see the the pools that do have some sort of spray water or something 
um, during during the rest periods, it uh, kids do migrate there. Then um, I don't feel strongly about it one way or the other, but I have noticed that. Okay, that's a good point. Thank you. I would also point out that you know not everybody's in the water all the time, and some other amenities might be nice. Um, even very simple ones like um, tetherball, four square courts. Um, if you want to get fancy, maybe a sand volleyball court, although I'm not going to volunteer to clean the sand out of the pool, but <laughs> some green space and some other activities for kids to do other than be in the pool because you know, they're not going to be in the pool the entire time they're there. I agree. I think it's a great comment. Um, is there so anything can I else? Circle? Oh, yeah. Um, so I started to say something, and I was working a basketball game, so I think I got cut off. I managed to mute myself. But returning to the Tuttle site, has there been any consideration given to moving the new pool to a different location on that site further away from the river? Because there's significant space behind Lane Avenue that really those baseball diamonds are at least 10 feet below the pool grade right now, and they don't fill up with water from the river. So if adding a diving well or doing some other things with that pool is prohibitive based on the river water seeping in because of its location, there is other space on that site that could be used that's further away from the river. I will say is that it is about it? flooding or is it about water table? Um, I believe it is about water table. Um, okay. We so we did not consider that, and I think it's a great comment. Um, you know, knowing that Tuttle has really kind of the largest, or let's say the most populous catchment area. Um, you know, probably partially because of its location near the university, but you know, we know that it is a very heavily used pool, um, and so I think that's a great comment that really um, that should be on the table as well. I think the new skate park that they're building there is a perfect example of like a good kind of like paired activity in the same way that like you often see like basketball courts adjacent to swimming pools um, just to the point of providing that like other recreational options nearby near pool sites like I think that a skate park and a pool go really well together <laughs> so Great, thank you. Um, well, we're, we're kind of up against the clock here. Um, I know there's probably more comments that people have thought of um, and maybe more will come to you after this meeting. Um, we're gonna put in the chat a link uh, to a comment form that you can access. Um, and that way, if you think of something after the meeting um, or if there's something during the meeting maybe you weren't comfortable saying, um, you can go ahead to that comment form. It has the images of all the concepts to refresh your memory. Um, and then you can uh, you know, type in what your comments are and we'll take that all into account as we're kind of reworking this. Um, our next step um, as a group um, is uh, to, um, you know, kind of put all this together. Uh, so we do have the in-person meeting um, covering all of this same information on Saturday um, at the uh, Thompson Recreation Center. So we're going to take that information that we get there. We're going to take the input that we've gathered from you tonight, and we're going to take another look at all of these concepts and see if we can't um, somehow work in um, as much as we can, um, you know, taking into account everything that we've heard tonight. There were some really great ideas, and really great concepts, and really great criticisms of what we've presented to you. Um, and so, um, you know, keep your eye on our website uh, as usual. Uh, once the meeting is done, um, you know, give us a few days to get everything together. We'll get it posted um, and we'll send you an email uh, when that's all posted and you'll be able to see it, review it, um, watch the video again, and then please fill out uh, the comment form um, that's linked in the chat if you do have any more comments that you'd like to share. As always, you can email us also at info at columbusaquatics.org, uh, but continue to watch um, for our emails and the website for updates on the process. 
Um, I really appreciate everyone coming tonight and taking time out of the, your day. I don't know if I'll see any of you on Saturday, but we'll be there and, uh, um, you know, everyone have a great holiday. Thank you so much.